The Seiko SKX, loved by many, hated by many, either way, it is an icon when it comes to entry-level divers. But how does this thing compare to a Russian powerhouse that's, you know, less than half the price? It's 1.47 p.m. Let's get down to business. <laughs> What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman and the Time Teller. It's time for another comparison video. The Seiko SKX versus the Vostok Amphibia. Now both of these watches have enormous fan bases. The Seiko SKX being a little bit more of like a mainstream icon and the Vostok Amphibia being more of a cult hero. However, as well liked as these two watches are, they both possess a fair amount of criticism. You know, people say the Seiko SKX is outdated. It's had some quality control issues. There's no hacking. There's no hand wind. It doesn't have a sapphire crystal. It's just old. And then on the other side, people say the Vostok Amphibia is essentially disposable. Well, we're gonna take a closer look at both of these watches and see how they fare. The Seiko SKX, this one is a 007 with the black bezel. This watch is 43 millimeters by 13 millimeters thick. Of course, it's got a Hardlex crystal. It's not sapphire, guys, it's Hardlex. This watch has got a unidirectional rotating bezel with some good positive retention there. And of course, this watch has got that beautiful Seiko LumaBright Loom. It's got a threaded crown and a 200 meter water resistance rating. And as we all know, the Seiko SKX 007 has the 7S26 automatic movement in-house, but no hacking, no hand wind, but it does have a day date complication. And I should mention that day date complication has a quick set function. Now guys, the Seiko SKX is a lot more versatile than you'd initially think it being a dive watch. I've worn it on the factory Jubilee bracelet. I've worn it on NATO straps and right now it's sporting a wrist candy watch club padded leather strap so you're getting some sophistication out of this diver and as i mentioned earlier the bezel really does have some positive retention and some good ratcheting and as far as durability goes i've had this watch for a really long time it's taken some really decent knocks and it's running perfectly keeping really good time and to all you Hardlex crystal haters, again, this watch has been through a lot and there's no real noticeable scratches on that Hardlex crystal. Hmm. But by far my favorite attribute this watch has is the beautifully vibrant proprietary LumaBright Loom. Again, out of every watch I ever review, it always comes back to LumaBright Loom. This seems to be the standard, shines very vibrantly, and it lasts a good long time. All right, so let's go ahead and put this one down and take a look at the Russian Vostok Amphibia. All right, now this Vostok Amphibia measures in right around 45 mil so on paper, it's a bit bigger than the Seiko SKX. They honestly look quite similar size-wise. I think it measures in a little bit bigger because of that cushion case. Now this watch is powered by the Vostok 2416B automatic movement. No hacking or hand wind either. You are getting a date complication, but it's not quick set. Let's see, you're getting a threaded crown with a 200 meter water resistance rating. The bezel is actually bi-directional and there's no real retention whatsoever. Now this watch is fitted with a domed acrylic crystal and again, that cushion case Case. with those two things mixed it looks like a really nice vintage diver all right so as far as aesthetics goes again I'm really digging this kind of vintage diver look and from a visual standpoint the finishing is pretty dang good for a watch that I think I paid like 60 bucks for now guys notice I said the finishing looks good I didn't say the fit and finish looks good because the fitment on this watch is kind of terrible. First, let's take a look at the bezel. Again, I mentioned that it is bi-directional and there's no real retention outside of just kind of metal on metal friction. It doesn't sound good, doesn't feel good, kind of feels gross. Let me see if you can hear it. I don't know if my mic is picking that up, but it, it, it's just kind of like nails on a chalkboard. It's not pleasant. And next, let's go ahead and take a look at the crown. Ah, the Vostok Amphibia crown. Notorious for freaking people out because, uh, man, so many of you have written to me asking me if their new Vostok Amphibia is broken. No, it's not broken. It's supposed to be like this. I guess. I'll get a close-up shot of this. Uh, this thing just wobbles. It's just a wobbly boy. Um, I don't know why. I don't know what is going on here. It feels like it's broken, um, but the crown just does that. That's its thing. All right, another issue when it comes to the crown fitment is uh, that the crown stem kind of doesn't always want to set the time. Like, okay, let's say we unthread the crown. We pull it out all the way because again, there's no quick set function with the date, so there's only one setting for the crown. Um, we spin it around, this wobbly, wobbly crown, and the hands aren't moving. I don't know why, let's move it the other direction. 
Nope, the hands are still not moving. And then sometimes, once in a while, up oh, there we go. Once in a while, you'll feel that resistance and the hands will start moving and you can go ahead and set the time. So again, doesn't really instill much confidence and um, yeah, kind of weird. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at both of these watches, the Seiko SKX 007 and the Vostok Amphibia, how do I think they stack up against each other? Well, the Seiko SKX's main complaint is that it's old and it's outdated. Well, if this thing's old, then the Vostok Amphibia is just straight up ancient. I mean, honestly, the SKX feels quite modern, tight, and tidy when you compare it to this Vostok Amphibia. And I'm gonna be totally honest here, guys. The Seiko SKX's crown isn't absolutely smooth as butter. Um, there's some grittiness in there and there's some resistance in there, but it is nowhere near as wobbly and kind of freaky as this Vostok Amphibia's crown, just seriously, on a whole other level. And when it comes to functionality, the SKX's bezel, again, it has that nice retention, that ratcheting retention. You can hear it, you can feel it. It's nice and tight and you can use it to time things with. But when we look at the Vostok Amphibia, again, it's bi-directional. It moves both ways and there's no real retention. So I wouldn't really use it and trust it to time anything. Which brings us to the Loom, guys. We've got to talk about the Loom. So I could gush over and over about the Seiko SKX's Luma Bright Loom. It's bright, it's vibrant, it shines for a really long time. Now, the Vostok, I don't know what Loom it uses. Now, the hands all shine pretty brightly, but not for a very long time. And then the indexes, um, they don't shine much at all. But again, honestly, it's not comparable at all to Luma Bright Loom. We all knew that. Now guys, the next thing I wanna bring up might be a little bit nitpicky, but if you're wearing a watch daily, you're gonna notice these things. Now, with most automatic watches, you can hear the rotor if you really listen for it. But the Vostok Amphibia, it is noticeably more audible than the Seiko's. It's like there's some pots and pans in there. Now both of these watches feel very, very comfortable on the wrist, no complaints there either way. And when the crown's all threaded and everything's buttoned up on the Vostok Amphibia, yes, it does feel like a really solid watch. But again, when you go to set the time on this baby, that wobbly crown, it definitely does not instill confidence in any way. So guys, in conclusion, while both of these watches could be considered kind of old school dive watches, one of them feels a bit more rustic than the other. Let's just say that. Now guys, hear me out, I'm trying to be as transparent as possible in this episode. I know that you know my love for the Seiko SKX is never ending. I have a print of a Seiko SKX right behind me, but both of these watches are mine. I've had numerous Vostok Amphibias growing up. Uh, again, this is my personal Vostok Amphibia, and my dad actually gave me a Vostok Amphibia when I was a little boy, and man, Aww. I loved it. So again, the Vostok Amphibia, in my opinion, is a great entry-level watch that you can give to your kid. They can beat on it, they can have some fun playing with it, and they can learn about wristwatches in general. But guys, for me as an adult, if I wanted an everyday watch or even like a vacation watch, a sports watch, I'd have to go with the Seiko SKX. And I know it's oftentimes twice the price of a Vostok Amphibia, but in my opinion, you're getting twice the quality. The Vostok Amphibia is a fun entry level watch, but the fit and finishing on the Seiko SKX is just much, much better. I am sure the comment section is gonna be a lively one, so I will see you down there. Leave me a comment, I wanna hear from ya. All right guys, and there you have it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Now I know after watching this amazing episode, you're asking yourself, how can I support this channel? Well, thank you so much for asking. Go ahead, click that link in the description below and shop at the Time Teller Shop. I have watches, watch straps, watch winders, watch toolkits even. It is truly the one-stop shop for the watch collector like you. So click that link, shop around, and you help me out a ton and you support the channel and I will love you for it. And if you're new here, if this is your first time joining us here at the Time Teller channel, I want to say thank you so much for checking out the episode, but please click that subscribe button. It takes one second and it helps me out a ton. And please, 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 while you're at it, go ahead and click that bell icon, guys. YouTube does a terrible job notifying my subscribers when I upload and I upload a whole lot and I don't want you to miss out. So please like, comment, subscribe, share this with other watch enthusiasts or other people that you think would enjoy this. I'm Jory Goodman at the Time Teller. And always remember, I didn't admit time. I just tell it. All right. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to the channel because there's a whole lot more where that came from. Also, I have no idea how YouTube works yet. Hopefully in the future, I'll get the hang of it. But I think there should be some recommended videos for you to watch. There might be one over on this side of the screen. There might be one over on this side of the screen. Who knows where they're going to be? YouTube's always changing. Life is always changing. You know, there's a lot to learn about life. Um, we'll save this for another episode. Anyway, click one of these videos. Watch it, subscribe to the channel, I love you.